Hello class, uh, we're going to discuss the range function. The range function generates a sequence of integers. Think of that. A set of integers. A sequence of integers. Any sequence of any integers. Could get very complex, but uh, and it could be very simple and elegant. Range and the for statement are best friends because the for statement the for loop statement, I should say, is used to iterate through a group of objects and a range is a group of integers. So they, especially when you want to iterate through something a set number of times, you could set your range. Let's dive into this. I'll go ahead and hit F5 to run this. Drag this over. Let's take a quick look at this. So here we set our variable, a range equals range five. When you use one argument with the range function, let's do a help on range. When you use one argument with the range function, you will see that it declares its stop value. So class of object range with one argument is the stop value, a range also has a start, stop, and then a third argument. You don't, it's not mandatory, but you could set the step. In other words, how it counts. Pretty cool, pretty handy. Let's check this out. A range equals range of five. So by itself, that's the stop. So here, Python creates a range of integers going 0 through 4. By default it starts at 0 because we only declared the stop here. And here we print out a range and here's the range printed out 0 through 5 but the list of the range and we print the list the objects that the range created is actually 0 through 4 because we told to start or stop at 5 by default, it started at 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, done. That's the basic use of a range. Now, this is just a, using the same range 5 function, stop at 5. We're going to use a, the for loop. For each object in my group of objects, for each integer in my range, stopping at 5, print the integer end with a space. So it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And here we go. Excellent, right? Our next one gets a little bit longer. So here we move on to, uh, to we're using the stop only range. And here we say a range equals range 10. And when we print that out, we see the range goes from 0 to 10. The start is 0. The stop is 10. So we'll get the numbers of 0 through 9. Moving right along, right here, this is the break for this. This particular range, we declared a range again, equals range, start at 10, stop at 16. So since it's stopping at 16, it's going to have the values, when we print out the range itself, we're going to have the values of 10 stopping at 16. So it'll be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Pretty cool stuff. And then in this section, right here, we're, we're right here with this statement. And underneath that, we have, let me highlight this. The range statement, start at 10, go to negative 10, stop at negative 10. So it stops at 1 before that, which would be negative 9. And we're saying step by negative 1. <clears throat> so when we print out the range itself, this is the range itself. We got the full range. And then we print out the list of that range. We get all the integers that are in that range. Start at 10, stop at negative 10, which is goes to negative 9, 
and your step is negative one. So it counts backwards, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, et cetera, stopping right before negative 10 as declared by our stop value. And that's the basics of a range.